Well, what have we got here? So this is my current pet project. I have actually, I purchased this guitar on New Year's Day, 2024. How I obtained it, I guess we can get into it into another video. Uh, but today I kind of wanted to go over some of the mystery and uh, see if I can get a little bit of the public's help with it. First off, I'm gonna call it a 1965 forward slash 66 Fender Duo Sonic 2. Uh, there's the headstock, which is in really great condition. The fretboard's in decent shape. Frets are in decent shape. The actual shape of the neck, I like, quite enjoy. Why am I saying 65? Well, there you go, August 8th, 1965, it is the V-neck. Somebody has changed the tuning machines. Uh, these are the late 60s, early 70s Fender F tuners. And you can tell there by the existence of that screw hole. And if you're familiar again with this model, that those were the original tuners. Uh, I guess that's a good time to kind of mention that. I've been around vintage guitars for basically all of my life, uh, but this isn't a model I'm real familiar with, so that's again why I'm looking for public health. Help? Health? I'll take it both. Um, this does have the perloid inlays, and now we'll kind of go to one of the mysteries. First thing first, all of the screws on the pick guard and this control plate have all been changed to flathead screws, which is odd. I believe Fender stopped using them in 53. Could have been even earlier, but that's kind of where my memory goes. Um, and like I said, even in this control plate, they've been changed to flathead as well. The body has obviously been stripped. It was a common thing. For some reason, people thought that there was a nice, you know, grainy finish beneath and surprise. Most of the times so there was not. As a matter of fact, uh, I have a 65 reissue Strat um, that I play quite often, and in the control cavity of that, it says, uh, I believe, S-O-L-C-O-L, -O -O which was, you know, a way of saying, make this one a solid color. Um, <laughs> that one is a Olympic white. Uh, but just a footnote. Uh, so the first body modification that I notice here is it's got, you know, kind of a snake bite, a weird pattern too, and I can't quite envision what that could have been. And I know a lot of times that the Duo Sonic 2 was kind of converted or they added the Mustang uh, bridge to it, so it had some sort of tremolo. Uh, but those, if I'm not mistaken, those were this width of the screw hole, and I'm not sure why it would have been back that far. So if there's something I'm not remembering, uh, or if something that you recognize, please leave it in the comments below. Uh, the next thing is, is the pick guard. Let's kind of flip it over and get into that. Um, so, excitingly, it still has the gray bottom pickups, uh, although the wiring has definitely been altered, uh, and it looks as if the pickup, I would imagine these are supposed to be going the same way. My, again, some of this stuff is way back in my memory, and too many chord changes and song lyrics in a way I can't get to it. But um, from my estimation, being that this has a black back on it, and you can see that it was crudely painted over uh, with spray paint. Uh, as a matter of fact, this is actually <laughs> remnants of whatever they painted on, whether it was newspaper or cardboard, is stuck to it. Um, my memory seems to remember if it had a black back like that, that it would have been a tortoiseshell or the uh, pepperoni, air quotes, gourd. Um, and I did take a, a, my razor and just kind of see if I could chip away some of the paint there and it does appear to be red. I'm not sure if that'll come out in the camera. Um, but that kind of brings us to the next point is my very light internet research and in my memory says that if it had white pickup covers, it was probably Olympic white. The other two colors were Dakota red and Daphne blue. I think, um, could have been Sonic blue, but Daphne blue and Dakota red we're gonna stick with for now in Olympic white. The only mystery then is why aren't these switches white as well? Cause that's usually how it went. And again, this thing's older than I am by well over 10 years. So I'm assuming a number of things could have been changed over time. 
I don't know. I kind of just don't want to do any more internet digging around. I figured I'd put it on uh, on the old interwebs here and see uh, if I can get some advice from folks or whatnot. So please leave it in the comments below. I will try to remove the paint uh, from the pit guard. If I'm successful, great. If not, uh, I do see where a couple of repros are reasonably priced and there are some originals that are out there that are not so reasonably placed, priced. Uh, but I would consider doing so based on what I already have into this. Also, the original tuna machines, I think I'll leave, although that um, ferrule needs to be replaced, I would assume. Although it works. Uh, and my question for you is, do you agree? Do you think it was Olympic white? Should I paint it Olympic white? I did run the serial number and on the Fender website and didn't come up with anything. Uh, it also threw me off because I thought that was an L at first. I'm like, wait a minute, an L series F plate. But in fact, it does appear to be a one, 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 nine, three, seven, six. So yeah, leave it below if you think I should paint it. And if you agree that it was probably Olympic white, um, and if you're along for the ride and the restoration of this, then please like, follow, and all that stuff. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks so much.